Yeah, that's for sure. Um, it has been uh, a very special division, that's for sure, Steve. And tonight, you can think of me as a film critic, whose job it is to steer you in the direction of a more obscure movie that maybe you didn't know about, but will end up being very, very entertaining. And with that, I give two thumbs up to the cruiserweight division. Now, if you haven't discovered it yet, uh, tonight's a great night to start. In this 176 to 200 pound division, the boxers are big enough to punch with power, but small enough to throw a lot of punches and occasionally dazzle us with hand and foot speed. And in this division, everybody fights everybody else. All the champions and top contenders battle each other on a regular basis. What a novel approach. So what's not to like? And even historically, this division has more than had its share of moments. The founding father of the division was Carlos de Leon, who produced exciting fights and 10 title defenses through the 1980s. It felt like he'd be cruiserweight champ forever, except for a fellow you may have heard of, Evander Holyfield. In one of the best fights I've ever seen, Holyfield won the title against white Muhammad Kawi, unified it against longtime rival Ricky Parkey, and beat De Leon to become the division's only undisputed champion. While many cruisers followed Holyfield's example and moved up to the more lucrative heavyweight division, one of my favorites moved down. Orland Norris fought 33 times as a heavyweight before downsizing to become an entertaining cruiserweight champ in 1994. In the signature cruiserweight battle of the last decade, James Tony and Vasily Jirov competed in the best fight of 2003, with Tony earning the decision. Last year, Jean-Marc Mormec and Wayne Braithwaite brought luster to this division as they sought to unify two of its titles. The action-packed bout was decided by Mormec's power, setting the stage for tonight's historic match. And in addition in this cruiserweight division, now that it's 176 pounds up to 200, there's such a big gap there that some of the smaller cruiserweights may have some trouble dealing with the bigger cruiserweights. So a lot of drama in this division now. And this is really a benchmark fight. It's a fight that could go a long way in legitimizing the, the cruiserweight division yeah. if the winner stays put. But that's a big if. For sure. Right? Well, unless there's a draw, tonight our, our first fight will produce only the second undisputed champion of the 26-year history of the cruiserweight uh, division. John Mark Mormek took the first step toward that distinction last April when he won the WBC belt from Wayne Braithwaite. Before that impressive win, Mormek was virtually unknown to American fight fans. But you're only as good as your most recent fight, and now Mormek is viewed as very good. As for IBF champion O'Neill Bell, well, his title fight win over Dale Brown was nowhere near as convincing as Mormek's triumph over Braithwaite. But Bell has been near the top of the cruiserweight rankings for years, and his big heart and even bigger punch make him a threat to anyone and everyone. The only previous undisputed champion at this weight, you might have heard of him, a fighter named Evander Holyfield unified the title back in 1988. Well, there is irony here. Mormek has been physically compared to Holyfield. Bell's pro debut was against Holyfield's nephew. And now Bell feels that this has to be a, a bull versus matador scenario to dredge up an old boxing <laughs> expression uh, for him to win. He, of course, being the matador or the boxer. Yeah. Uh, but is he capable? Well, first of all, we're not going to give him an A for originality on that True. analogy, but it happens to be pretty accurate, that's for sure, because Jean-Marc Marmec has shown us bull-like rushes in his fights, especially his landmark win over Wayne Braithwaite. But if we think of bulls as one-dimensional and lacking creativity, well, think again, because Mormek mixes defense and guile in with his aggression, and he's got a command of every single punch you can possibly throw. Now, O'Neill Bell will have to be a clever, busy, and powerful matador, traits he's often, but not always, shown in his fights. Part of that Bell Matador strategy is not laying on the inside with more mech. He can throw big punches, but from a distance. His signature punch is the right hand, and more mech can be hit with this punch, but it has to be thrown in a straight manner. Bell has an uppercut in his arsenal, and it might be a fight turner. Against Kelvin Davis, another bull, Bell was able to land not one, but two uppercuts in this sequence. And just as impressively finished with the left hook, and this could very well work 
against more mech and produce good results. Mormek wants to be close, where his strength can do the job. And an early body attack could slow Bell up, and it could also produce one other benefit. It will help Mormek set up his powerful right hand in what is a battle of right-handed punchers. These body shots debilitated Wayne Braithwaite, and they also lowered his defense. And this would allow a freight train right hand to get in there. This is a sequence Mormek hopes for tonight. And the underdog, Jamaican-born O'Neill Bell, a former state wrestling champ. Very spiritual guy in constant search of his inner self. Uses yoga and meditation in his unorthodox training, which might include fishing and hiking. He purifies, detoxifies, eliminates bad vibes, even changed his nickname from Give Him Hell to Supernova to sound more positive, but don't be misled. He's a dedicated pro who's worked hard to get here, the biggest fight of his career. Al, he's unbeaten in 25 straight, but 2005 was kind of shaky. Ironically, it was a year in which he won a world title and defended it, and yet, Steve, you're right in characterizing it as shaky because his win to get the title over Dale Brown was very controversial, and he struggled mightily against Sebastian Rothman before knocking him out in the 11th. But all that may actually point to Bell's main strength, Steve, because he has overcome adversity in many of his matches, and you know what? He believes he can always do it. Well, he can turn it all around tonight after a rough 2005, even though he won those fights. The thing about O'Neill Bell, while his skills have been questioned, he can punch, and he is resilient, and we'll soon see if it makes a difference versus the overpowering Jean-Marc Mormet. There he is, O'Neill Bell in the ring. Terrific crowd on hand here to see Bell versus Mormeck in our co-feature at the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York. As for Mormeck, until tonight a rarity in the sport with no intimidating nickname, so the good-natured Frenchman asked American fans to help, and in a show.com poll, voters selected a name from these five choices. All these options were approved by Mormeck. And when ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. introduces him momentarily, everyone, uh, Al, including Jean-Marc, will hear his nickname for the first time. Uh, can I have a quick vote here? Sure. Uh, I like mighty Jean-Marc Mormeck. That's my favorite. He agrees with you. He also likes uh, Black Thunder. Uh, my personal favorite, Hit the Deck. I think the name uh, this guy really wants at the end of the night is Undisputed. And here is the fighter with the distinctive facial hair. And in contrast to Bell, the reserved, low-key Jean-Marc Mormeck, France's first unified world champ. Talk about an identity crisis. Forget America and forget Paris. That's right. They weren't even televising his fights in France until recently. Somebody had a good line, uh, being a cruiserweight and living in France is like being the fifth Beatle. <laughs> no one really knows who you are. Well, if Mormeck wins and wins big tonight, he'll make some noise. And Al, like his opponent, hasn't lost in eight years, 28 consecutive wins, but only one fight in 05. Yeah, it's kind of, by the way, I like his formal attire. He uh, looks better than us. Uh, yeah, I, it's been a pattern for him. The fact that he's only fought once here. He fought only once in 2004 and in 2003. He's not happy about the inactivity, and yet despite an occasional slow start, it doesn't impact him very much. He does look. He's ready for the Academy Awards. Well, when he takes that uh, beautiful formal wear off, he'll look like a finalist in a bodybuilding contest. A guy who thinks outside the box, or in this case, the squared circle, has his own management company representing others and his own clothing line. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. At 33, Mormeck is two years older than Bell, who turned 31 last week. Bell stands six feet, the slight edge in height and in reach. At yesterday's weigh-in, Mormeck almost exactly what he was for Braithwaite. And Bell nearly 12 pounds more than Braithwaite was versus Mormeck. We'll see if that's a factor. And the key unified rules for this contest, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt causes a fight to end within four rounds, it's a no decision. After four, they go to the cards. If a punch causes a cut and the injured fighter cannot continue, he loses by TKO. Hold it up, hold it up. Take the 
So here on America's Fight Night at the theater at Madison Square Garden, getting ready for Jean-Marc Morbeck versus O'Neill Bell for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship, we get the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York City as we have a big night of action coming away, a world championship doubleheader, and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions in association with Madison Square Garden and Showtime. This unified world title of attraction is sanctioned by the WBC President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Bismarck Morales, the WBA President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor Bolivar y Casa, and the IBF President Moh Marian Mohammed. The supervisor is Hiawatha Knight, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Ron Scott Stevens. At this time, we introduce to you our three judges scoring the bout from ringside. From Brick, New Jersey, Tom Kazmarek. From Albany, New York, Tom Shrek. And from Rivervale, New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing our third man of the ring, the referee in charge of this bout. He is working in this, his 42nd world title bout, Wayne Kelly. All right, fans, here we go with our co-featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing to you first on my left, the IBF title holder in the blue corner, wearing green trunks with gold trim. He is fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia by way of Jamaica. He weighed in at 199 and one half pounds with a record of 25 wins, one loss and one draw. He has 23 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the hard hitting IBF Cruiserweight Champion of the World introducing O'Neill Supernova. his opponent across the ring. The WBA and WBC title holder in the red corner, wearing a black trunks and joining us from Pantin, France. He weighed in at 197 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, two losses with 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the first and only Frenchman to hold a unified title. Here is the WBA and WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World by popular demand, known as the Marksman, introducing Jean-Marc Mormet. Once again, the referee in charge, Wayne Kelly, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled. Jean Mark O'Neill with boxing for the Unification Cruiserweight Championship of the World. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Shake hands, come out boxing at the bell. Good luck, 12 rounds. Back to the corner, back to the corner. Well, the marksman, as we just found out, has to be the best dressed fighter in boxing. <laughs> You don't want to be on the inside versus the physically imposing Mormek, a style predicated on strength, pressure, durability. He's got a very good chin. Second out. And because Second of out. Uh, Bell's size, he told us he'll be able to handle the pressure of Mormek better than it did Braithwaite. Bell a dangerous hitter with either hand, but the right is his signature punch, and he's been known to change fights instantly. The general feeling this could start out as a boxing match and break into a fight. The question is when. And the interesting thing is they're both really slow starters. They both had issues early in fights in their major fights. So we'll see which man can get off better. Right now it's O'Neal Bell. Bell said he would lay off, stay away and box at least on the outset. He doesn't know what's going to happen after that. 
Throwing the jab. Gormek in the black trunks. Bell in the green with the gold trim. Bell getting in some nice right hands upstairs. And, you and know, a right uppercut by Mormek that just missed. Steve, it's interesting. Already early, though, we see the O'Neill Bell right on the inside with Sean Mark Mormek. He didn't want to do that. He didn't want to be languishing in there already. He's pretty much making this a, a slugfest right from the beginning. He's being very aggressive, He's chopping right. rights and lefts to the head of Mormek. Maybe he was just using that as a clever ruse of ploy to throw people off, throw the scent off. And remember... We saw Wayne Braithwaite fight Justice Wayne and do very well early against Norvac. And we know what happened there. O'Neill Bell, a suspect in questionable technical skills. He has his skeptics. The controversial fight with Dale Brown didn't help. But he's roared back to win. Ask Sebastian Rothman. Who was knocked out in the Breaks. 11th? Kelvin Breaks. Davis, who dropped Bell but lost back. by TKO. Wayne Kelly, the third man of the ring. Yeah, Steve, it's a good point. This is a fight in which please don't make any snap judgments as we go along because the plot could have many twists and turns with these two boxers. And both of them starting a lot faster than, than usual. You pointed out that they are not yeah. fast starters, but this is an aberration. Absolutely. Well, Bell forced the pace. And there's that uppercut from O'Neal Bell. Look at him. He knows, and we talked about that in the keys. Right clean. He knows that's a punch that can work against John Mark Mormek. They're already opening up in this first round with a lot of the different tools that they have available. And Mormek is hit him. Well, he we wondered when would it break into a fight. How about the first round? Yeah. And Mormek. Really going to work. Good shots to the chin of Bell. Oh, a big left hand. It snaps Bell's head back on the ropes. A lot of action here in the opening round. 20 seconds remaining. Terrific flurry by Jean-Marc Formbeck. Who will be the first undisputed cruiserweight champs in Savannah Holyfield in 1988? Unless it's a draw, that'll be decided tonight. Time! Yeah. Talk to me. Move to your left. Talk, talk to me. Talk to me. Move to your left. I want you to move to your left. Take a left. Throw a straight right hand down the center. Don't stay in and bang with him. Now, O'Neal Bell against the ropes, a place he doesn't want to be against Mormek. Look how Mormek goes to the body, and that sets up punches to the head. He, too, has a great uppercut, which he threw. And look at those combinations. Those are creative combinations from John Mark Mormek. It's so wrong to think he's a one-dimensional, bullish fighter. He, he has a lot of different weapons at his disposal, and as we... A look from a, the top shows you uh, Mormek pushing Bell back, pressuring him against the ropes. Whenever O'Neill Bell gets against the ropes, he has issues, as did Wayne Braithwaite in the fight we saw last year. And it was on the ropes in close quarters where O'Neill Bell really struggled in his last fight with Sebastian Rothman. How about that shot by Mormek? Bell's just going to have to land big punches to keep Mormek off of him. But as uh, we pointed out, he cannot be on the ropes. Once the powerful Momek pins you, as Al mentioned, he did against Braithwaite, he really has the physical advantage, and he has that very attack on the inside. Oh, a smacking left hand, and another left by Momek to the head. Break! No hold, no hold. Bell has pinned a lot of his hopes on the uppercut on the inside which is a good idea. He has to be very careful to not throw that punch too far out because he'll get countered and hurt by Mormek. Oh, a great combination to the head by Mormek. There goes the mouthpiece of O'Neill Bell on an uppercut to the chin that went flying into the seats. Wayne Kelly waiting for a stop of the action right, right. so they can replace here, the mouthpiece. Time, time. Let's go. O'Neill, O'Neill, over here. Let's get that mouthpiece in. Suck it up. So, uh, so who's the slow starter again? Wow. Wow. <laughs> they have been, but not tonight. John Mark Bormek and O'Neill Bell getting right to the action. 
a left hand that just missed by Mordbeck, a glancing blow. Now, Bell has been down in a couple of important fights early against Arthur Williams in round one, against Kelvin Davis in round two, so he has struggled in fights. But as Steve pointed out, in fights like the Rothman fight, he can come back. He's got tremendous heart. Four times he's had knockouts in the 11th round, O'Neill Bell. So maybe let's just fast forward to the 11th and see what happens. <laughs> he would like that. He sure would. You know what else is on display early in this fight? The fact that John Mark Mormeck, a better defensive fighter than some people give him credit for. He covers, he blocks a lot of those shots, they don't land flush. And we see his body punching at evidence there. Or back with power in both hands, but a key weapon is the left hook. We've already seen it on display. Just keeps that pressure on. He crowds you. O'Neal Bell strategically doing exactly what he did. Teddy wouldn't do. Nice right hand by Bell. And, you know, we got a hint of that when he suggested that his trainers are the one that said he really should be the matador to the bull and that he just assumed get in there and battle it out. Well, he's doing it, and he's losing the battle of the uppercuts on the inside. Now Bell doing a good job of sticking and moving. No holding. Step back. Ormeck missing with most of those uh, attempts. Ormeck also has a very good uh, right hand, but it's Bell. Beck comes for Ormeck. And again, not where you want to be for Bell on the ropes. But he turns him around and clubs him on the top of the head. Boy, a high work rate in this, uh, in this uh, fight. A lot of punches being thrown. Tee off, baby. Yes. <coughs> well, Bell has a nice uppercut, but so does Jean-Marc Mormeck. And when you lean in against the fight of the short size of Mormeck, you're asking for this kind of trouble. The mouthpiece just flying into the second row. Uh, a great uppercut by Jean-Marc Mormeck. And O'Neill Bell spending way too much time against the ropes in this fight. We saw Wayne Braithwaite in this position. And, of course, Jean-Marc Mormeck makes it happen by pushing in. Look at the body shots. And the more you counter off the ropes, and Bell did, the more it makes Jean-Marc Mormeck go after you. Let's go, second down. This is the, the, you know, this fight, all hey, the hey, dramas on, we thought would be acted out in this fight, Steve, over the first two rounds have been acted out. Okay. So where do we go from here? It has been a busy, torrid pace over the first two rounds. Round three scheduled for 12 for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. John Mark Bormek holds two belts, BA and BC, O'Neill Bell, the IBF. Mormeck in the black trunks, 31-2 with 21 knockouts. O'Neill Bell, 25-1-1 with 23 kills. O'Neill Bell slapping a little bit with some of his punches on the inside, and that is diminishing some of the power. And you can't get away with that against Mormeck. Big body shot by Mormeck, and he continues to land to the midsection. Well, these are just two tanks. Going at it. And now in the center of the ring. What you had to do? Keep him up. Now Bell told us that while Braithwaite, who weighed 187 when he fought Mormeck, uh, couldn't handle the pressure. He said, I'm 199. He said, I'm almost a heavyweight. I'll be able to deal with this constant pressure from Mormeck. We'll see. So far, but you wonder if the cumulative effect is going to wear him down eventually. And that's perhaps what Mormeck is banking on. O'Neill Bell very busy in this round and probably landing more punches. That was an illegal move. A little no shoulder. shoulder there. Come on, you know better than that. You right? Getting the caution from Wayne Kelly. <laughs> Braithwaite, who's, or uh, Mormeck, who's been very busy, fires away, misses. He was not very busy last year as a fighter. The only fight was with Braithwaite. And he is just continuing to pound the way to the body and then goes upstairs. Mormeck. Right. No the interesting thing about Mormeck is not only are his body punches used to debilitate his opponent, they always end up setting up something for the head. So, it, you know, it's a dual purpose. Boy, he can throw those shots. 
It's really one of the best kept secrets. Yes, you're absolutely right. As you pointed out, even in France, they weren't televising this fight. Even in his homeland. Now, this is an interesting round. Mormek has landed the harder punches. Bill Neal Bell has been busier in terms of numbers throw. So it'll be interesting to see how the judges look at this. Bell just leaning on Mormek now. And sometimes that can wear you out. Can wear out Mormek, but Mormek comes battling back. And I think he's stunned on Neal Bell. Some tough shots, and it was Mormek with his back to the ropes. There's an uppercut and a left hand. Beautiful combination to the head by Mormek. And that really weakened Blake, Bell. Step back, step back. And big punches like that at the end of the round usually mean you have won the round. Another straight right hand by Mormek. A left hand up to the chin by Mormek. What a finish by the Frenchman. When you pin him down like that, step two, step around, and you find your six shot. He tired on it. Oh, yeah. He tired. He tired. Sit down. Listen to me. Come on, come on, come on. No, no, I'm going. No, I'm going. I'm okay. I feel better this way. You feel good that way? Look. Look here. I'm going to step around and die. Don't look for shot. Bang, bang, and step around. Bang, bang, move left. Throw the one, two down the center. When you're in that, this, that. You know, the variety of punches Mormek is using in this fight, very impressive. And the left hook, which we didn't think would be a major weapon for him, it has been. And then the uppercut came right after it. What we see is just a, a variety of punches, the straight jab. In all these sequences, you see everything from Mormek. He even got tangled up in the ropes. Still, Bell couldn't quite take advantage of it. And the hook has been, I think, the one big surprise for Mormek. It's been landing much more than we would have anticipated during the course of this fight. Very impressive by Jean-Marc Mormek in the black trunks as we enter round four, scheduled for 12 for the undisputed Cruiserweight Championship. No holding. Bell holding and hitting. If he can just, oh, what a short, crisp left hand to the chin by Mormek on the inside. A right uppercut by Mormek. Bell comes, comes firing back, but then just a jab by Mormek sends Bell back. This is break, a fight break, that is worthy of having an undisputed champion. They are putting everything on the line. We're into the fourth round, and already we've seen uh, a good skill level and lots of action. Tremendous activity. If Bell can only get Mormek to the late rounds, perhaps he's thinking because uh, Mormek has been inconsistent in that area. He gets Wayne Kelly to help him. Your boy, that was a break for O'Neill Bell. A little holding and hitting by Bell as well. A little desperation here by Bell. He has felt the wrath, the power, but then he comes right back with a, a pair of right hands. This is the charm of O'Neill Bell as a fighter. Every fight is filled with drama and adversity for him. And yet he hangs in there. Can he against more men? Bell showing a lot of heart. Bell has been down by no, his account about six or seven times. Last time down, he was dropped by Dale Brown two fights ago in the fourth, but the ref ruled it was after the bell. Mormek's never been down, only in the amateurs. And remember against Sebastian Rothman, as you pointed out in his first defense of the IBF title, he was way behind, had many issues, and he came back in that fight. So he has tremendous resiliency. And even now, even though he's not landing a lot of those punches, he's firing back against Mormek. Mormek. Firing as well. What a spiraling left hand to the to the stomach by Mormek. It has been non-stop action from the opening bell as Bell goes into a crouch. Again. It's a rise from the crowd. Well, he's an unorthodox guy in the way he trains. He's a little unorthodox in the ring right there. He's been very busy in this round, O'Neill Bell, but again, Mormek landing the harder punches. So, interesting round to score. Mormek uh, outworking uh, Bell. Whoa, 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 whoa. Keep him up, keep him up. Well, Mormek doesn't speak Hi. English, but he speaks boxing. He understood. Eric Ramey in the... Mormek Corner, our translator. It's an off. 
Excellent, great. Good. Release your punches. The pressure of Marmek continues to have a very adverse effect to Bell. And this was a very dangerous position for Bell, not just against the ropes, but in the corner, where very hard for him to get out of the way. Now, a lot of those punches didn't land, even though it looked more Neil, Neil Bell indicating they didn't land, but still, there were some that got in by Mormek. There is a cocky side to O'Neill Bell as well. We saw it in the uh, Dale Brown fight, perhaps a little overconfident in that fight, why he had some difficulty there. Very controversial win over Dale Brown. But we, we see in this fight, O'Neill Bell, there's a good jab in the straight right hand. He would be so much better served to stay on the outside, Bell. From this posture, he's got a better shot at landing the jab, the right hand. Look at how he mixes in the hook. And a little movement against Mormek goes a long way. He's going to have to use movement and guile against a powerhouse, a thoroughbred like Mormek. Now, this is also a very small ring, about a, uh, less than 20 feet, which doesn't work in the favor of O'Neill Bell in terms of this movement. But look at this round. We're very close to a minute into this round, and O'Neill Bell has, at least for this portion, used the strategy he talked about. Yeah, it's and an 18-foot 18, 18 ring. Great uppercut on the inside by Mormek, which has been a very valuable oh, oh, weapon no, for him throughout the night. I think the problem for the Bell is he can't sustain that. And there, that score happens to completely agree with mine. I have a 39-37 as well. That's the unofficial. Yeah. Unanimous to Mormet after a four. Chuck Johnson from the USA Today. Greg Leon, BoxingTalk.com. Franklin McNeil, the New York Star Ledger. Our Come press row scorer. Low blow. Oh, low blow. Goodbye. Well, Come not time. the first time that this yeah. has happened. We're just talking about it. It happened okay. in the. Uh, Take your hand. You feel all right? You got like you have a little bit of time, five minutes to recover. You want to go now? Sure. All right. Time in. Time happened in. Happened in the Rothman fight. Well, more mech just takes a few seconds. He has wow. up to five minutes if he wants. Big mistake. Twice against Rothman, he was penalized for low blows on Neil Belt, and once against Kelvin Davis. So that's not uh, an isolated incident. And perhaps uh, adding to it, uh, frustration setting in for Bell. Now he's uh, climbing around a little. But you know, this is a round, round five, in which he's done the right thing. He, he's probably winning this round, and he stayed away from the power of Mormet. Bell using everything, uh, shoulders, elbows, whatever he can do. And get the edge. And you know, Steve, the movement of Bell is now making those left hooks by Mormet short, and they're not quite getting there. Bell's a tough guy, I tell you. This invited Mormek in. But again, languishing on the ropes, not the place to be. All of a sudden, though, Mormek is pushing his punches a little bit. This is an important round for O'Neill Bell. He's gotten himself back in the fight at a point where it looked like he was in danger of really slipping into a deep abyss. And then holding when he can, so as not to uh, allow Mormet to do damage on the inside. But Mormet is with the left hand, primarily. And a right uppercut. Boy, these are really vicious body shots by Jean-Marc Mormet. And then a right hand just before the bell by Bell. Have a seat, sir. Neil, keep, keep the punches up. So, so, right? so, 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 I know, I know. Okay. O'Neill, okay. 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 yeah. Bell set the tone for what was his best round of the fight by you staying on the outside, throwing punches, then slight lateral movement, throwing punches, back, and movement. He's not standing right in front of him. He continues to move, he goes back. He kept the distance. But <laughs> later in the round, we will see a low blow as he's on the inside. And I mean, that was low. And uh, as I pointed out, not the first time that has happened for O'Neill Bell. 
journalistically accurate to report it. We're not saying that he's a dirty fighter, but he's been penalized for that in the past. Well, there's no question he's had a history. Yeah, but we didn't see any, any indication there was a penalty. So round six scheduled for 12 for the undisputed cruiserweight title. The Frenchman John Mark Mormek in the black trunks, 31 and 2, 21 knockouts, has uh, been in control. O'Neill Bell in the green with gold. Being warned about uh, hitting behind the head, 25, 1 and 1, 23 KO. Mormek 5'11, 197 and three quarters. Bell six feet, 199 and a half. Nice right hand, but it just clipped Bell on the uh, on the chin. Didn't have full impact. Bell moving back just in the nick of time. And we see in this round, round six, more movement from Bell, combinations. So this is the strategy we anticipated from the beginning from him. And despite that great success by Mormek early, oh, Bell's still able to do this. Yeah, Bell hanging tough. Just trying to get this fight as deep as he can because Momek has had uh, some fatigue problems as fights have gone late. And uh, Bell seems to come on better in the later round. And we have confirmed that there was not a point deducted because of that low blow. Yeah, it's just a warning. But he's coming close. Yes. Good body work. This is a superb round again for O'Neill Bell. Mormek, honestly, slowing his work rate perceptibly. Nice right by Mormek, and he waves Bell in, but will Bell take the bait? And remember, Bell, a guy who can change a fight with one punch. He can turn things around instantly. But speaking of being turned around, Mormek turned Bell around. Wait. One of the keys I had was good body work early by Mormek. Well, boy, has he done it. Now, the question is, what impact will it have on O'Neill Bell as this fight goes on? Because in truth, it's been Mormek who's looked a little tired. Both are so physically strong. Bell is, is somewhat awkward, which can work to his advantage. It might be bothering uh, Mormek, who just landed with a, a right cross. We said this would be a battle of the right hands. Well, in the last 30 seconds, right. finally in this fight, it was. This is an excellent fight. This is really a great fight. Bell may have lost his mouthpiece again, and I'm not sure the referee is aware. And John Mark Mormek now going to town on O'Neill Bell. And he has made okay. this a close round Step again. Back. It was one O'Bell was controlling. Final seconds, round six. And a good round, comeback style for Bell. He lost his mouthpiece. Fix it. Hey, Fix it. Love you, baby. Love you, yeah. baby. Look, let me tell you something. Looking good. I want this guy. On my He's face, covered. on my face. Listen, What's on my face? He is covering up. Come on, man, on my face. You know, he's covering up his body. Work, work, work. But I want you to do it. Hit this hand. Get to the side. Run the side. Run the side. Run the side. Run the side. I got you. You got me. Yes, sir. You know. And I want you to keep them hand good out there. Good. 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 And box him from the disc. Okay, you're doing a beautiful job. It's good work you're doing. Great work. Okay, go get him. Round seven scheduled for 12 for the undisputed cruiserweight title. No knockdowns thus far. O'Neill Bell coming on a little bit now after Mormek uh, controlled the uh, first five rounds or so. <laughs> Mormek just missing with the uppercut. He scored with the, the left. <laughs> Mormek just hammers away. Mormek breathing deeply. And all 
a sudden, things have slowed considerably. The pace was so quick earlier. And I think for Beck, I don't know, maybe running out of gas a little, or he's just trying to conserve his energy and trying to... We well, you know, got a second a win against no Wayne Braithwaite. Right. Remember, he tired in the later rounds, and he also did it in his second fight with Virgil Hill, in which he ended up winning a decision. So there have been fights, and now he's getting whacked around by and hurt by Bell. Yeah, he is. Remember, he's never been down as a pro. O'Neill Bell jumping all over more back as this thing has really turned around. We talked about the resiliency of Bell, and he's showing it. A uh, series of right hands to the head by Bell. Step back, step back. Oh, more Mets in trouble. Yeah, he's stepping back. He's exhausted. He's run out of gas. And he's accepting body shots. Oh, then he comes back with a wicked combination of the head. More back with tape flying from his left glove. But here comes Bell again. Amazing give and take. They should be stopping this for the tape. O'Neal Bell started out this round blazing. He landed a couple of clubbing right hands. That's what hurt Mormeck. And you know they landed in the back on the uh, back of the head around the temple, which I think affected Mormeck's equilibrium. And then he was having a very hard time figuring out how to defend himself against O'Neal Bell. But Jean-Marc Mormeck give him big marks for courage and resiliency. Those were two tremendous shots he just hit O'Neal Bell with. That left hook was right on the button, and Bell kept coming. And the last part of this round was as exciting as it gets. Mormeck in trouble, we thought, against the ropes, and yet even though Bell would land shots, Mormeck did as well. And now we enter round eight, coming up a spectacular round. Scheduled for 12 of the undisputed cruiserweight title, and as Al pointed out, worthy of such. There's the uppercut from Bell, but all of a sudden, Mormeck now throwing his punches in a more crisp fashion and with more power. Let's see if Mormeck has caught his breath, but O'Neill Bell once again pinning Mormeck into the corner. Bell really coming on the last few rounds after it looked like he was in serious trouble. Interesting thing is we talked about Bell not languishing on the ropes. It's more Mech who's been doing that for the most part. And that's because of fatigue. There's no question. And he just keeps inviting more trouble when he says to Bell, come on in. But he's exhausted. What Bell needs to do, though, is stay his distance, throw his punches, but not languish on the inside. That's where more Mech can hit him with those hooks, uppercuts, and kind of clubbing right hands. Bell asked for that. He came in. The, the guts, the no, heart of, of Bell. He's taking some hellacious shots by Mormack. That's been the hallmark of his career, as you pointed out, in trouble in a number of fights down at least seven times in his career. He finds a way to hang around, hang in there until he can get the job done. He's only lost once in 27 yeah. fights. 
which is amazing when you consider how much, how many perils of Pauline he goes through in every fight. Oh, a heavy right hand by, by Mormet that drove Bell back. He bounces off the ropes. Next seems to have gotten a little more win back. This and a right hand over the top by Morbeck. Close round this round, this eighth round. This is a round that could go either way. Hey! The gap closing in this fight. As Bell has turned it around. Bell 2-0 and in world title fights. Morbeck 5-0. Now Bell using that movement again that he used earlier and pot shotting from the outside against Mormex. So Neil, well Neil Bell may be cementing this round for himself unless he gets caught, which he might here. Bell was on rubbery legs earlier in the uh, in the fight, the first few rounds, but survived. Hey! Step back! Step back! Well, still to come from New York City, our main event. It'll be Brooklyn's Zab Judah coming home to meet the top WBC contender, Carlos Boldemir. Okay, okay, okay. Here is the undisputed welterweight champ. Okay, okay, okay. Cutting out all the potential distractions of fighting in his hometown. And also the many looming mega fights being mentioned. Tough not to get caught up in all of that. Nevertheless, he says he's fully prepared for Boldemir, not overlooking him. A guy who hasn't lost in 19 straight, Baldemir. Can Baldemir catch Judah looking too far ahead? Stay tuned, we'll soon find out. Judah, Baldemir, our main event for the undisputed welterweight crown. Round nine, more Met gazing into the crowd. <laughs> you know, this is, yeah, really, it's interesting. This is where you wonder about the one fight per year for John Mark Mormet. He has not, he's not happy about that inactivity, uh, but this is where you wonder if he can retain his sharpness over the course of time with, with that kind of schedule. And he's got his hand in so many things now, a management company, a yep. clothing company. You wonder if that serves as a distraction. O'Neal Bell, promoted by the Warriors promotion down in Florida. They're connected, oh, big right hand by Mormeck. They're connected with the Seminole tribe. Uh, Carlos Baldemir, we're going to see in the next fight, uh, promoted by the Siquan tribe in uh, California. It's a new trend in boxing. These fighters promoted by some of the Native American casino organizations. And now how ironic it would be if O'Neal Bell becomes the first undisputed cruiserweight champ since Holyfield because his first win was over Evander's nephew. A first round TKO in Atlanta back in 1998. Bell's first uh, fight as a pro. Yeah, and an Atlanta resident, so he's many, and uh, Holyfield has uh, been with him on occasion. Now, in this round, there's a, there's a shot by Mormek that went a little bit low to O'Neal Bell. Yeah, you saw the grimace by Bell. Bell, who, who used to drive a UPS truck in Atlanta, a former state wrestling champ in Delaware, born in Jamaica, but hasn't been there since the early 90s, hasn't been back to Jamaica, says he's got to get back soon. This is maybe the only round in the fight in which I think you can say these fighters are trying to take a little time off to, to get there, even though it's still an active pace for most normal fights. For this one, it's been a little less frenetic. Let him go. Step back. Less than a minute remaining in round nine. There's the press row scoring. Chuck Johnson has it all even now. With this comeback by Bell, Greg Leon has Bell up by two, and McNeil has it even as well. I've got it 77-76 for Bell. I had one even round, so I'm in. So far, for all us unofficial no scores, we're pretty much uh, in line with each other. The real judges are Tommy Kasparic from Brick, New Jersey, Tom Shrek from Albany, New York, Steve Weisfeld from Rivervale, New Jersey. O'Neill Bell having a pretty good ninth round. He's been very active. 
And I think he's outworking Mormeca, although there's that big uppercut in the inside from Mormeca. Corkscrew uppercut to the chin by Jean-Marc Mormeca. Mormex is standing on the ropes, finishes with a left hand. That's good, that's good. Okay, breathe, breathe, have something to drink. Release the oxygen. Okay. 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 Get a sense of an inner peace with that guy, O'Neill Bell. St sitting there with his eyes shut. He, he is into yoga and meditation and that kind of stuff to get himself prepared for these fights. Again, though, languishing on the inside with Mormek. That gives Mormek a chance. From the outside, especially a tired Mormek, and we think he is a little more fatigued than Bell. Uh, has a harder time. Well, this could uh, spell trouble for Mormack, who started off so nicely in this fight, the first five or so rounds, but it's O'Neill Bell who gets better as fights wear on, and Mormack usually doesn't. Big shots in the inside there by Mormack. Oh, a big right hand, a right cross to the head by Bell. He's landing that short chopping right on the side of the head, and it's impacting uh, Mormack. Well, Beck looks like he's got some unsteady legs. And you know, Bell has gone to the body more in the last couple of rounds, which his corner urged him to do James plenty, and it's been effective. I More think that now, Al, uh, that Mormeck is, is arm punching and isn't getting it from the legs. That sequence right there is the right sequence for O'Neal Bell. He landed two more shots, step back. Don't languish on the inside, at least from his standpoint with Mormeck, because that is what can happen to you. Bell goes right back to it. Going to the body. Hard shots by Bell. Then a right uppercut on the chin by O'Neill Bell. Another right uppercut that was blocked by Mohamed. This is great action on the inside. And again, they are in this corner. When Bell stays on the inside, it gives Mohamed at least an opportunity. Now Bell dancing away momentarily to set up. Takes Mohamed back to the center, but Mohamed keeps going backwards. He backpedals to the ropes for some reason. See how Bell, Bell got suckered in to come in there. And there's no reason for him to stay on the inside and engage Mohamed that way. Stay on the outside and jab and throw the right and then step back. Look at Mohamed, he just keeps going back to the ropes. He's, he's got to be tired. That's the only reason yep. he could be doing that. I agree. And Bell is winning this round, I believe, but he still puts himself in harm's way when he does that. Mormet just needs something to lean on. <laughs> I think you're right, Steve. He's a tired fighter right now. As we approach 30 seconds left in round 10, Bell smacking Mormet all over the place. There goes Mormet's mouthpiece. And Mormet's in trouble. Bell smothering him. He goes down for the first time in his career. Please. Crumbles to the canvas. I don't think he's going to make it. Wait, it's Kelly waves it's it out. Here. It's over. Here. It's over. John Mark from Mech on the canvas. And O'Neill Bell is the undisputed the cruiserweight champ. The first since Holyfield. A come from behind victory for O'Neill Bell. What else is new? And they're taking every precaution, thank goodness, for the safety of Jean-Marc Borbeck. They don't want him to get up so fast. 
keeping him uh, on his back. There's no rush to get him up there. It was some very hard shots to the head, and they are being very, very cautious with more men. Taking no chances. And at the end, the punch on the top of the head had an impact on And the celebratory O'Neillville. We talk about dramatic contrast. Things I told him yesterday. He said she was going to let you play. I want to see if he laughs. Ah, come on, I'm joking. Come on, he's joking. Well, of course, this is a good sign that he's talking. Coherent. Please tell me something when you see him. Don't bother him. Now, finally able to uh, make a move. They want to get him on the stool. So he's able to sit up and now stand and sit down on the stool. And the, the doctors will, will check him out. Almost certainly he'll be taking, taken to the hospital. Anytime there's a knockout, they take a fighter to the hospital just for precautionary reasons. Um, what you got in? Yeah. 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 Tell me I want to watch a war, okay? Well, John Mark Mormeck has never been knocked out. A passel full of belts for Neil Bell, and here is how he got them. Bell on the inside. That was a tremendous right hand. And you'll see Mormeck as he's going down here get clubbed. Great uppercut. Clubbed on the top of the head a couple of times. He's way low. And Bell doing a very good job, by the way, of picking his shots. Very accurate with those punches, hitting what's available to him. And in retrospect, looking at this, he got it with some major punches. And that punch at the end on the back of the head was a dangerous one for Mormeck. He looked like he was short-circuited, Mormeck, on his way to the canvas. And Kelly hardly even counted. The impressive part of this sequence, I think, for O'Neill Bell, as we look at it again, is how accurate he was with his punches, how he picked his spots, and for the most part, didn't rush his punches. He's weighing his options here and looking to hit Mormek. Mormek getting very low, which made him a tough target. That's why some of those punches landed on the back and top of the head, which, of course, is more dangerous. And that right hand may have been the one that really did, did in Mormek. And then that right hand on the top of the head, obviously, dangerous but we talked about O'Neill Bell's resiliency he had some hellaciously bad rounds early in this fight but he does not give up he doesn't lose his poise in fights and he can come back to do what he ended up doing here uh, tonight and giving himself a chance at celebration a glorious victory for O'Neill Bell he told us his intention was to bring limelight to the cruiserweight division but he'd like to see bigger paydays of course at cruiser but you never know. He could always give in to the temptation of the heavyweight division, particularly with the current diluted state. If every fight that the cruiserweights would have is like this one as a championship fight, who wouldn't want to see them and who wouldn't pay more money? It has uh, really gained momentum the last year or so because of uh, the fact that the best is fighting the best. And they have been action fights. Good to see a smile on the face of Mormeck after he went down. The show of sportsmanship here between Bell and Mormeck. So let's get the official word from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 50 seconds in round number 10. He is the winner by way of knockout. And now the undo... Cruiserweight champion of the world, O'Neill Supernova Bell. So Bell raises his record to 26, 1 and 1, 24 knockouts. Mormek slips to 31 and 3. His first loss since 1997, snapping a 28 fight win streak. And O'Neill Bell becomes the second undisputed cruiserweight champ since the division was created back in 1980. It's Bell and Holyfield who went on, of course, to become undisputed heavyweight champion. Well, if he does stay at Cruiser, some feel he should give Dale Brown a rematch given the closest of their fight last year. Coming up.